overview of what they are and what their role is in cannabis. Yeah, Ben, absolutely. So uh, terpenes themselves are not unique to cannabis. So these are small molecules that are found in essentially all plants, at least all plants that I know about. What makes them kind of unique for cannabis is there's a lot of them in cannabis, more of them than there are tend to be in other plants like hops or, or pine or whatever. And so what is a terpene? A terpene is a small, simple uh, molecule, like it's small, um, very aromatic, very small, uh, very hydro, uh, hydrophobic slash lipophilic. So small molecule. And it, we've sort of known about these molecules for many years because, as you just said, they add to the taste and aroma of the plant. And so you have something like, you know, even if you don't know what terpenes are, you kind of have still experienced them. So you, you smell that fresh lemony smell from a real lemon, not the not the stuff that comes in a can. And, you know, that's that's D-limonene, uh, right? That's a that's a terpene. You smell that smell coming off of hops. That's alpha humulene. Uh, you know, the pine tree smell, that's beta pinene and so on. So you've all experienced terpenes, even if you haven't run across that term before. And so in terms of what they do in cannabis, yes, of course, they add to that unique aroma and flavor. Although, um, uh, parenthetically, they actually are not what give cannabis that real skunky smell. So we've actually isolated, or we were not the ones that isolated, our collaborators isolated that compound called prenylthiol, working with it separately. It actually has different activity than either the terpenes or the cannabinoids, but just a, kind of a side note there. So it's not exactly that skunky smell, but some of the other taste and aroma elements of the plant are from these terpenes. And so, of course, for many years now, people have been looking, we sort of knew that it did this taste and aroma, but people have suspected that these have had therapeutic and pharmacological effects going back some time. And so those have been under active investigation in the literature. And um, and then what, as also as you suggested, that people have suggested that these terpenes contribute to the entourage effect, the idea that the terpenes might somehow combine with the cannabinoids to give you an effect unique to the plant that you wouldn't get from either one purified alone. And so there were sort of all these ideas floating around. There had been some studies, particularly in pain, suggesting that terpenes could relieve pain. Even clinical studies had shown this, uh, but there were some real limitations in the literature. And the, there still is no solid evidence whether or not the entourage effect actually occurs in like a, a, a cannabis extract that you yourself are taking or smoking or whatever. And so we kind of surveyed this landscape in about 2020 is when we started our work in this. We said, okay, you know, there's a lot of suggestions, but not a lot of hard data. So let's drill down and figure out what these molecules are actually doing rather than just kind of throwing around ideas. And uh, so we started by isolating the terpenes and studying each one individually rather than, as you say, combine into this kind of this mix of this extract so that we could really figure out what each one does alone before we start, you know, at looking at them in combination. And so we published that initial work in 2021 showing that the terpenes have what we call a cannabimimetic effect, mm. that they, they behaviorally, they look like a cannabinoid, although they are not a cannabinoid. And their mechanism is a little bit different than a typical cannabinoid. But nonetheless, it produced some of these same effects in animals like, uh, you know, sedation, the kind of the couch lock or couch high that you get, um, catalepsy, a decrease in body temperature, uh, pain relief, and so on. So it had these it had these effects. And interestingly, in terms of the entourage effect, when we combined the terpene with a cannabinoid, a synthetic cannabinoid, we got a higher impact than either one alone. And that's kind of what got us the most attention in 2021 was this idea that that you could combine that it was that the terpenes were having this effect and that the effect could be greater when you combine them with a cannabinoid. And so that's what really got our journey started in in this area. Excellent. Um, so how do terpenes interact with the human body, um, particularly in relation to pain? Yeah, so that is still, you know, really a, a big unknown question, right? Not completely unknown. So there have been, as I mentioned, clinical studies, other studies showing that the terpenes relieve pain. So even like, say, a study where they would give a linalool to um, laboring women, like women in labor giving birth, and it showed that they had this benefit. And there are other studies looking at chronic pain patients and so on. Give the terpene, you see this benefit. But there's still, even when you know that, there's still a lot of unknown questions. First of all, like we all know that terpenes have a strong smell. And we also know that humans have a strong placebo effect mm. uh, when they're exposed to what they think is a medication. Like I haven't seen any well-controlled studies that suggest that the terpene effect is separate from the placebo effect. Mm. And mechanism is also unknown, right? We don't know how this, if it is relieving pain, how it's relieving pain. And that's something we try to tackle in our own work by 
first of all, working with mice who do not kind of have this this expectation that a human being does, they they don't know. And furthermore, we were injecting the terpenes, so they couldn't get like that aroma or that smell to sort of confound the effect. And then looking at the mice and then also figuring out mechanism and diving in and figuring out exactly what these are interacting with. And at least in mice, we now have data that suggests that these terpenes are stimulating the cannabinoid receptors in your brain. So sort of the, the known cannabinoids that are going to be, or sort of known cannabinoid receptors that are going to be stimulated by drugs like THC and also your endogenous cannabinoids that your own body produces. Uh, and we also know that they can bind to and activate a receptor called the adenosine A2A receptor. And again, this is one of those targets all of you know about, even if you've never heard that word before, because that's the same uh, drug, or sorry, the same receptor that's targeted by caffeine. So we've all right. stimulated or inhibited our adenosine A2A receptors, whether you know it or not, because we, we do it through caffeine. And we found that the terpenes stimulate, at least in the mice, this receptor to produce a, a strong pain relief in a chronic and neuropathic pain. Interesting. All right.